G'day guys, welcome back to Just The Tips for round four. The seasons are starting to really skip ahead, isn't it? Um, can't believe we're at round four already. Uh, you would have seen, I've done my round three uh, sort of reaction video earlier this week. Sorry, that was a little bit late, uh, but that's now up on the channel. Today, we're just looking at Just The Tips for round four. I was fairly happy with my score of seven out of nine uh, last week when I think everyone, or well, most people got the showdown wrong. There were certainly people who got that right, uh, but not a not a really easy round of tipping. So I'm pretty happy with seven. Uh, we'll shout out the round three winner. Uh, Nikki Olivia actually scored a perfect nine and got the margin right as well. So there you go. Uh, four people got a perfect score of nine, which is crazy when they, they tip the crows, but obviously uh, they're looking pretty smart right now. We'll shout out the overall leader, uh, Santa's bag six again leads the competition with 23 correct tips. That's uh, that's really well done. I think I'm in the I'm in the top 107, uh, so going a fair bit better than last year, which is uh, nice to see. I'm well ahead of Druzy, which is great. In terms of fantasy, I've moved up to 79th as well, which I'm pretty happy with. Not not a very good fantasy player, uh, but the overall leader for that is Shuckers, uh, who was coached by James English, and I seem to remember that name from last year. I think James finished uh, maybe pretty high, and, and I think won a few rounds as well. So congratulations to all of those winners. I am hoping I can keep some sort of pace with you this year. Before we get into the video, guys, I just want to thank everyone who's jumped on the channel lately. We had a really good march as well, so uh, plenty of growth in the channel, so I just want to say thanks. Uh, it does appear that still nearly 40% of you who watch the videos are not subscribed. So if you're enjoying the content, please do us a favor and subscribe to the channel. But here we are on squiggle.com.au uh, looking at, uh, obviously there's the current ladder on the top right of the screen. So we've got three undefeated teams with Brisbane, Melbourne and Carlton appearing to be probably the best three teams so far on, on an exposed form. We also have three winless teams, Port Adelaide, who would have called that at the start of the year? 0-3 and, and sitting third last. West Coast 0-3 and, and Essendon 0-3. And so a bit of a surprise there. I know a few people uh, expected the Eagles to drop this year, but I don't think you know we would have foreseen what's happened to them so far. Far. I'm hoping as an Eagles fan we correct that fairly soon, but I don't know if it'll be this week. But let's get into uh, what should be a, hopefully a pretty good contest Port Adelaide versus Melbourne. Port Adelaide obviously winless coming up against the undefeated uh, and reigning premiers. So for the power, this is uh, this is becoming must win, I'm afraid. They've put themselves in the position of needing to win this game uh, when you probably would have thought they're in less than 50% chance to win this game even when they're in form. I know they've got their injuries as well, but something's not quite clicking with them at the moment. So this is a big ask for them to beat the reigning premiers. Who, uh, who just beat Essendon fairly comfortably and to be honest, don't look far off the pace that won them the Premiership last year. This is an iffy one because, uh, you know, I mean, think Melbourne beat them last year uh, when both teams were good at Adelaide Oval. So this ground holds no fears for them. Melbourne obviously won a, uh, it was the qualifying final against Brisbane at this ground. So they're, they're fine at Adelaide Oval. The danger is they're coming up against a team that's probably playing for their season already to some extent. And, Despite their injuries, I, I think they're still a good team, you know, under the surface somewhere. So there's the danger of it clicking for them in this game. So I think it's there's a chance of an upset here, but uh, you'd be a brave man to tip the winless power against the reigning premiers. I, I think Melbourne should win this game, and if they do, they'll win by about 25 points. But uh, I'm intrigued to see how, how this one goes. Next, we have Geelong and the Brisbane Lions. This is uh, a good clash again, starting the round with some uh, some big games in theory. Uh, down at GMHBA as well, which is a tough hunting ground for any traveling side. I do remember the Lions last year uh, got really close. I think it was just that contentious non-holding-the-ball decision that ultimately cost them the game. They probably should have won it, which is, you know, I think we have to take that into consideration. You know, some teams play well at GMHBA and some do not. The team that I support is uh, is routinely annihilated there every time we go. But if the Lions went there last year and nearly won the game, then maybe this ground holds no fears for them as well. So it's a tough one. I think both teams are, you know, in the thick of that top four sort of conversation, particularly the Lions. The Cats obviously uh, managed to topple a of what is a pretty good Collingwood side, to be honest, as well. It did take them to the last quarter to really uh, break free, but when they did, uh, they were very, very hard to stop, as evidenced by the fact that they won. I think I'm going to just back the home side here, to be honest. I know the Lions are good there, and I think they are actually the better team from what I've seen so far. Cardinia Park, I think the Cats will be able to win a close game. Let's call it six points. Then Sydney take on North Melbourne. This one's looking a little bit more one-sided than those previous games. Uh, Sydney coming off a loss against the Dogs last week. 
uh, in a game where the Dogs probably, you know, controlled possession, had their opportunities to really win the game, uh, but Sydney stayed in the hunt and uh, nearly stole it right at the end as well. But uh, I, I don't think you can really mark Sydney down for that. The Dogs at Marvel Stadium as an away side is a tough fixture. So everything we've seen from Sydney this year has been consistent with uh, with how we rate them. I think they're a, they're a good team and uh, shouldn't have too many issues here against North, who, you know, were unconvincing in their win over West Coast uh, and then carried some really poor form into the clash against the Lions where they lost by 108 points. And while the Lions are good, North, to me, look like so far the worst team in the comp. So I'm going to say the Swans should win this quite comfortably by, let's call it six goals. Then you've got Collingwood and West Coast at Marvel Stadium, a game at the start of the year, I would have thought, you know, we should probably win this, We're given that Collingwood finished second last, but the form they've showed all year so far, or in the first three rounds, has uh, has been really compelling. Obviously, um, dispatching of the Saints, uh, far too good for Adelaide, and for three quarters, looked like they were far too good for Geelong, which was, uh, which was an outstanding effort. Unfortunately, just their high pressure game style, they couldn't sustain it. Uh, they're coming up against a, a you know a depleted West Coast again, who um, you know I think they're going to get a few players back this week. But even still, you'd be a very brave man to back them in. So the vulnerability for Collingwood here is uh, you know maybe they're a bit tired being a young side and playing a high pressure game style. There is the potential that could come undone you know any given week. But I think I don't think West Coast are going to be particularly hard to beat this week. So I'm going to say Collingwood win this by. 45 points. I think they have the weapons to really put the Eagles to the sword. Then you've got Richmond and the Western Bulldogs. Richmond have been uh, a bit up and down this season so far. Losing to Carlton in round one doesn't look so bad in hindsight. They were far too good for GWS and looked uh, a lot more comfortable in that game and sort of looked a bit like themselves, uh, but then got undone by the Saints by five goals. And watch in what was a pretty good game, to be honest with you there. But if they couldn't beat the Saints, it's hard to see them beating the Western Bulldogs, who finally notched their first win of the season last week against what is a good side in Sydney. So again, I think uh, the Swans are far more of a challenge than Richmond are at the moment. That being said, I feel like Richmond do have the potential to win this game. I don't think they're a better side, but they can really click into gear sometimes. And I think there is this is a bit of a danger game for the Dogs if they're not on top form. I will tip the Dogs, but I, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if this is quite a good game. I'll, I'll say if the Dogs play their brand and control the game, they'll win by five goals but there is upset potential. Next, you've got Fremantle and the Giants. Fremantle uh, had a slightly improved performance against West Coast. Again, it's not really a game I don't think we took too much from. Fremantle missing certainly some soldiers in that game with uh, Darcy, Sarong, and Mundy and Fife all missing as well. So a depleted midfield in particular, but I think they worked into the game well last week and probably built some confidence uh, piling on the goals in the second half. The Giants equally uh, probably got a little bit of confidence last week by beating the Suns by, uh, by four goals over at Metricon Stadium. And again, I don't know how tough an opponent Gold Coast is just yet. I, I think I see, need to see more. I think on pure talent, I, I rate the Giants higher here, and particularly their midfield. So Fremantle don't get some soldiers back, particularly Sarong and Darcy this week, which I, I think both should play. I think Darcy will play. Sarong may be a little bit more iffy. I think if Fremantle have their players back, they will win at home. But that, that kind of speaks to how unconvinced I've been by the Giants so far. I expected more of them this year, and uh, they haven't really delivered. But the, ugh, Druzy kind of talked me into tipping the Giants a little bit here because he thinks they're going to win. At home, I, I feel like Fremantle will have an improved performance. They haven't been great this year, and uh, I've been I've been fairly positive on them. I've, I think I've tipped them pretty much every game this year, and uh, but I think they'll go 3-1 and one with a 17-point victory. Essendon then play Adelaide. Essendon currently on the bottom of the ladder uh, at the start of this round. Obviously, on the right here, it says West Coast have gone lower because <laughs> they're going to get belted by Collingwood probably, but while they're on the bottom of the ladder, I don't think they've been the worst team this year, and uh, although they're missing Merritt, who is uh, super important to their, to their midfield and I know they've regained shield in that, but I don't think they've really covered the loss of merit, unfortunately. I still think that, you know, there's there's quality there. I don't think they're an 0-4 team. And while Adelaide have been good and just beat the power, they've, they've actually been really, really good for a team that uh, I expect will probably settle somewhere in the bottom four towards the end of the year. They're playing with really good spirit. So this game is winnable, but I, I think I'm going to have to tip Essendon here, who I just rate as better at the moment. And if Essendon drop this, that is huge alarm bell. So I'll, I will tip Essendon to win this by, let's call it 29 points. Hawthorne then played the Saints. Hawthorne uh, nearly came back from about six goals down against Carlton to win win the game. And uh, the, while it was probably a bit of a flat sort of first half, maybe in the second half uh, they were able to click into gear and they they play really nice, attractive football as well. And they're a talented team. On the basis of what I've seen so far from you know the Saints, I know the Saints have won two in a row against Fremantle and then Richmond. 
I think Hawthorne is a tougher opponent than both of those teams, and on exposed form, I think Hawthorne have been better. So I'll be surprised if the Saints win this. They're not without their chances, but I'll say Hawthorne win this by 21 points. The final game of the round is Gold Coast then playing Carlton at Metricon Stadium. Gold Coast, uh, as we discussed before, went down to the Giants, a team that I think is comfortably better than them, and a four-goal loss on paper isn't too bad, but again, haven't really seen enough improvement from the Gold Coast here to really make them a threat in this game, I don't feel. We're obviously coming up against Carlton, who you know, from, from what we've seen so far, uh, probably in the top four teams uh, in the competition right now. Obviously, there's a lot of football to be played. Can they sustain it? Uh, I think they probably will, to be honest. But regardless, on the talent they've got at the, in this game, some of their players are really starting to uh, to hit their prime. And that forward line in particular um, is is quite a threat with uh, Kerno and Mackay in there. I don't know if the Gold Coast have a key defensive sort of uh, challenge to that, to be honest. So regardless of all that, I think Carlton seemed to play well against the Gold Coast Suns, and you, it's good to look at head-to-head -head when considering your tipping. So I think Carlton will win this comfortably by 39 points. Well, there you go, guys. That is my tips for round nine. Let's have a quick look at the ladder. I've got two undefeated teams in Melbourne and Carlton sitting 4-0 and top of the ladder, and the Lions and Hawthorne rounding out that top four. Collingwood in fifth. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, not undeserving from the football that they've played so far. Um, on the other end of the scale, Port Adelaide and West Coast remain the two winless teams in this year's competition. So the latter starting to take a little bit of shape, starting to reflect, um, you know, which teams are generally better than others. I, I think if I had to look at teams who are probably, you know, in the wrong ladder position for what they deserve, I think uh, Fremantle is a little bit high there. I think their fixture has been fairly, fairly generous. I think Port Adelaide are better than that. Uh, West Coast, it, it's a hard one to assess. We need our players back before we really know where they're at. And of course, the Bulldogs in 10th, I think they'll uh, they'll end up close to that uh, top four, potentially top six. So there you go, guys. That is my tips for round four. Let me know in the comments what you would have done differently, what you think I got right, and what you think I got wrong. Let me know your tips as well. Not sure I will be able to live stream this weekend as I will be at work all weekend, unfortunately, but uh, maybe keep an eye out and I'll, uh, I'll let you guys know if we find time to do one. As always, guys, subscribe to the channel if you are enjoying it, like the video if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.